It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Larry Lesseur and Winston Burdett, both of the CBS television news staff. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Jeffrey W. Lewis, director of the Bureau of German Affairs of the U.S. State Department. Mr. Lewis, you're head of the uh, German Bureau in the State Department. Uh, are you encouraged by what's happening in Germany today? I certainly am, Larry. When I went into Germany during the war, in the army I was then, I saw a nation that was flat on its back. The cities were ruined, the people were starving. When I went back there uh, just a year or so ago, you have a going concern with a strong, vigorous people ready to make their own mark in the world. Well, Mr. Lewis, I think everyone who's been in Germany recently has been impressed by this <coughs> vitality of German strength and the sheer power of their revival. And in view of that, what assurance do we have that this German power and German nationalism will not get out of bounds again? Well, I think the strongest assurance we have is the nature and the character of the men who are leading Germany. They are the most sincere, or they are among the most sincere Europeans of our time. They have no uh, desire. They have uh, learned their lesson, if we may put it that way. They have no desire to again engage on an adventure which leads to the disastrous uh, war which they experienced this last time. And as I say, they are sincerely desirous of forming a unified, strong Europe which will help to defend the West against uh, the Russians. Well, Mr. Lewis, do you think the Germans will soon join the European defense community? As a matter of fact, Larry, they already have. They've completed all legislative processes. The only thing that now remains to be done is to clear away, and I think this will occur in a very short time, a court question as to whether or not the EDC is in accordance with the constitution of the German Republic. Well, what are the outside obstacles to German rearmament? Well, I think the principal obstacle at the present time is the uh, fear of the French that uh, they perhaps are uh, being faced with a too strong a Germany if they join the EDC. I think that the greatest obstacle now to the uh, EDC is, the, is the, the questions in the French mind. And I think that once the French can bring themselves to ratify the EDC, uh, all further obstacles will be at an end. Well, Mr. Lewis, uh, you mentioned that uh, Germany's present leaders are European-minded. Uh, what assurance do we have that this leadership in Germany is going to remain in power there? Well, I don't know that anything is dead sure in this world, but I, I tell you this, that the sincerity of the German leaders is such and the uh, tem temper of the people, as witnessed in this last election, is such that I personally am confident that this t same general type of uh, orientation will continue. You remember that the election resulted in a very decisive victory for Chancellor Adenauer and for his party. So decisive, in fact, that both parties of the right and the left practically disappeared from the scene. Well, do you Mr. see any... Yes. Excuse me. I was going to say, Mr. Lewis, this is a pretty iffy question, but what would happen if Chancellor Adenauer died? Well, now, that is an iffy question. Uh, I, of course, when you have a very strong personality, such as the Chancellor, it's very difficult indeed to see some of the younger men and see their talents as they are uh, developing. And I feel quite confident that should the Chancellor die, and I certainly hope he does not, there will be other people to take his place and carry on the same policies that he's been pursuing. Well, along the same lines, uh, Mr. Lewis, the, uh, the neo-Nazi party was very, very badly beaten in the last election a month ago, but uh, do you see any possibility, any danger, any internal political danger in Germany that there may be some kind of Nazi revival under another name and in some other form? Well, I suppose that there is some danger of that, but uh, again, I I'd, I'd, I'd take, uh, take as my... Uh, uh, proof that this danger is not great, what happened in the elections. There, although there had been prior to that time a fairly strong representation of such parties, 
throughout the country and in the lender governments, the state governments, it disappeared completely as a result of the election. And I think that this definitely proves that the, uh, that the people, that the, that the uh, uh, appeal of that type of person has diminished in, uh, as far as the Germans are concerned. Well, Mr. Lewis, are you apparently saying that Germany is without extremism right now, but what is to prevent a democratic Germany from forming an alliance with Russia against us? Well, I think that one thing is that uh, of all the people in Europe, the Germans, I think, know what uh, alliance with the Russians can mean. After all, a good deal of Germany is now occupied by the Russians. There is not an iron curtain in Russia in the sense that it is, I mean in Germany, in the sense that it is in other countries. People have relatives, there's hardly a family in West Germany that doesn't have a relative or members of their family in East Germany. And they know what happens over there. And they know what happens in a country that is dominated by the communists. I think that's the strongest reason why, of all the people of Europe, uh, the Germans perhaps know best what it means to be a satellite country. But to go back to rearmament, why is rearmament of Germany in our own self-interest? Well, it seems to me that our own self-interest demands that we build a strong Western alliance capable of resisting the tremendous pressure that's exerted by the Soviet Union. You have in Europe, in the center of Europe, a strong people, some 50 million in number, the Germans, the West Germans, highly developed industri industrially, uh, very ambitious, very hard working, a good, solid kind of people. And if you are, it seems to me, if you are to protect yourself in this country, then it is, def it is definitely to our interest to build up the strongest possible alliance in, in Europe. Well, a and member of the British Parliament said to us the other day on this chronoscope program that uh, a Germany without an arms burden would be an unfair competitor in the world markets. Do you feel that way too? Well, I think there's a lot to that because after all, uh, with the Germans uh, not uh, needing to devote their industry to the production of armaments, they can produ pr uh, produce goods which will sell in the world markets while a good deal of British industry, for example, is tied up in non-productive war armament making. Well, Mr. Lewis, how are we going to prevent, or if you don't like the, that phrasing of the question, what guarantee do we have that uh, German rearmament will not bring with it a militarist revival, as many Frenchmen fear, and with that revival a new drive or desire to drive toward the east and revise the eastern frontiers of Germany with Poland and so on? Well, I think that the answer to that lies in the, in the sentiment of the people, the German people themselves. And I speak here not only of the people who formed the coalition, or who, are, who voted for the present coalition, but also the opposition. They are very sincerely at the present time, unmilitaristic. Unmilita they are quite interested in making certain that any future German army will be under the control of civilians, and most of all, they are not interested in having a national army of their own. What they are interested in is contributing their strength to a European combined army. Well, I fear we may be overlooking the Russians right now. Do you think the Russians would actually let the Germans rearm? They seem to fear them very much. Well, of course, that's one of those questions that no one can, can answer for sure. I believe that uh, the Russians will have no choice but to accept the um, European Defense Treaty, uh, if, it, if it is ratified by the participants. I think that the uh, Russians will certainly do their best to delay, to prolong, to confuse, and in general to uh, create as much dissension as they possibly can among the European, Western European nations. Well, will we agree, uh, Mr. Lewis, to a unified and unarmed Germany? I notice you stress the unarmed. Let me talk about the unified Germany first. Our, our, our terms, or the terms under which a Germany can be unified, and this goes for the West Germans as well, is first of all that it should come about through free elections, through free circulation in all zones of Germany, through freedom of the press, freedom of radio, and so on, so as to be sure that there is, in fact, a freedom of choice on the part of the people. If that is so, 
then we feel that we have no, nothing to fear, that the Germans will not, in any significant numbers, opt for a communist form of government. We had evidence of that, incidentally, or we had evidence of the strength of the feeling, even in East Germany, in these latest June 17th riots. Well, speaking of those riots, Mr. Lewis, do you think that as a result of what happened on uh, June 17th, the uprising throughout much of the eastern zone of Germany, do you think that as a result of that, the Russian grip on, this, on their zone is stronger or weaker today? Well, in a, in a sense, I think it's stronger uh, because I think that the, what the riots showed the Russians above all else was that if they were to remain, if their influence was to remain in East Germany, it was necessary to keep their armed forces there. In other words, the, Soviet, the communist regime in East Germany proved itself absolutely incapable of handling this uprising. And the Russians themselves, before it was very old, had to step in and do it themselves. So that, in a sense, I think it's probably stronger because the Russians have had to clamp down. The last thing in the world they wanted to do, really, was to uh, exhibit this show of naked force. But they were forced to, either that or, or, or have the situation completely get out of hand. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Jeffrey W. Lewis, for being with us tonight. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lusser and Winston Burdett, both of the CBS television news staff. Our distinguished guest was Jeffrey W. Lewis of the U.S. State Department. To watchmakers of the old school, such as Longines, pride of workmanship is the traditional attribute of every detail of every operation. In truth, the smallest cog in a watch is as important as the biggest wheel. Pride of workmanship made Longines the world's most honored watch. Honored at world's fairs by 10 grand prizes and 28 gold medals. Honored at government observatories with countless prizes and citations for accuracy. Honored as official watch, of leading sports and contest associations the world over. Now for you who have an appreciation of the fine and the beautiful, the pride of workmanship so evident in every Longines watch makes an irresistible appeal. Our particular message at this time is an important one. If you wish to buy and own or proudly give a truly fine watch, you may select a Longines watch for as little as 7150 and regardless of the price you pay for that Longines watch, it is made with that pride of workmanship which has made Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift. Longines, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Challenging Entertainment, Omnibus on the CBS Television.